In this video, we're going to take a look at creating IK handles. Now, an IK handle is an inverse kinematic handle that we apply to a skeleton. Let's just take a quick look here at the basics of this. We'll just say this is a fictitious leg with a foot. Now, I want to add that IK handle to it. We'll go to Skeleton, Create IK Handle. Now this puts me into an IK handle creation mode and it's waiting for me to provide an input. And you can see down at the lower left corner there, it says left mouse to pick start joint for handle. So this is my start joint right here. This is going to be my end joint. So I'm going to click the start, which would be the character's hip. And now we want to click on the last part. Notice that I'm not going to the end of the skeleton or to the foot. I'm going to the ankle. And I want to go to the ankle because that's really where I want the character control to be. And we'll take a look here why. So if I hit W, I now go into my move tool. And now I can move this entire skeleton through this single handle. And it functions inverse kinematic, meaning that it's starting at the end and working its way back up. Notice when I raise that up, the knee and the thigh basically move for me. We don't have to do anything extra there. So it's a very cool setup and it just saves us a ton of time when animating. Now, what would happen if I add this directly to the foot? Well, now the foot is going to be included in that kinematic chain. Not really the best of results because it's trying to animate the shortest bone first giving these a much greater strength and less priority. So when designing our IK handles, we want to do it from the perspective of how would you move. In this example of a leg, when you actually take a step, it's your ankle that's coming up. The leg has to move first, then the foot moves second. So we want to design our skeleton and our controls in the same manner. So let's open up our crow model and we'll add an IK handle here to our character. I'm going to go to Skeleton, and we'll just click on Create IK Handle. Let's open the options here so that we can see what's happening. In my options, I have a current solver here, and it says Single Chain Solver. Underneath it, we have Rotate Plane Solver. Well, I'm going to stick with the single chain, and then we'll create a rotate plane so that you can see the difference. Now, essentially, they're going to get us to the same spot but they each have their own pluses and minuses. Let's go ahead and add single chain. I'm going to click at the character's hip there. And then I want to click on his ankle to complete the IK handle. And now when we lift that up, perfect. The leg bends, the foot comes with it. So it's a very simple setup there. We're going to go back and we'll add this to the right leg. We'll add a rotate plane solver, same process. We select the root, then the end, and I move it. Looks identical. Don't really see any major difference there, except there's this brown ring up there at the root of my IK skeleton, whereas on my single chain solver, I don't get that. So on the rotate plane solver, we get this extra manipulator that enables us to add some rotation values. And we can actually take these further by connecting something else to those rotation values. And this is how we create a complex rig. And that rig allows us to have custom controls that are easy to select, easy to understand, and that we can move around effectively to animate our character. As opposed to, where's the IK handle? Well, it's way down in there. I don't want to have to go in and select individual joints either can just be a pain in the neck. We want something nice and neat so that we can select things quickly and know exactly what they are. So that rotate plane handle gives us those extra options that we can go back in and expand upon this particular setup. If I hit T on the keyboard, I can then access that rotate plane handle. So this is still on the IK handle and you can see now I get a new move manipulator there and I could grab it and rotate the leg. And we're rotating it through that IK handle. Now the rotate can still happen on the single chain, but we do it by hitting E and rotating the IK handle. 
So essentially, we get to the same end game, but we can do it through different means. Now, if I go back to that rotate plane handle and try to rotate, nothing. It has to happen through the plane handle, not through the IK handle. So those are the major differences between the two. If you're looking for just a very basic, simple setup, the single chain solver is the way to go. And on our Crow character, I'll probably stick with a single chain solver because the rotate plane is just going to be an overkill and I'm just not going to use that extra feature. Now, the other thing that we want to understand here when adding an IK setup to our character is that we don't want IK everywhere. A lot of times it's just not necessary. Like for the toes, for instance, we may add IK because what the IK allows us to do is keep the joints planted. So that's important for legs and everything associated to legs to stay fixed at the end joint. Where a wing, well, I don't really want the wing to stay fixed. And look what would happen. Let's add an IK handle to the wing. Pretty ugly. It's not really moving the way I want it to move or the way I expect a wing to move. So IK handles do not correct or provide us the perfect setup every time. And so we want to use those sparingly. We want to use those effectively. Well, let's go back and let's add a single chain solver to the character's feet. I'm just going to add a single chain solver to each of my character's toes and then grab my IK handle. Now it's getting really difficult to select these things. That's why we resort to building what's called the control rig. So that's the normal functionality, right? We just pull those up and everything moves with it. But if I were to take these and lock them down, and I can do so just by adding a keyframe. If I just hit S, that adds a keyframe there. Now those IK handles have a purpose. And that purpose is at this particular frame, I have to stay right here. So now if I move the leg, look what happens. Whole different dynamic here. The toes want to stay fixed and they want to follow their IK handle. So this gives us a whole nother dimension in how we can control those joints and control our character. So for a bird like this, we might want this. We might want his claws gripping something and only come off when I actually go in and animate these pieces right here. So those are the major differences there that we have with our IK handles, as well as when we would choose to add an IK handle, choose to resort to something else or just leave the joints as they are.